the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session with me, Koki Christopher Tijuwondo, a teacher of physics. Today we shall be studying physics in Form 1, and we are going to start by correcting the assignments that we had in the last lesson. So here we have the equation for the assignment. Uh, read the thermometers given below and record the temperature. We are going to have the thermometer and then immediately after we will have the solutions right beside it. I want to invite you to pause here and look at the assignment from the last lesson if you have not yet done it. You are free to try to answer the question first in your book and then as you go through, you will learn more. So here the first thermometer is here and we are expected to write down the reading of this thermometer. If you look here, the, each division or between 40, each major division here between 40 and 50, there are 10 subdivisions, meaning that one of the subdivisions stands for one degree Celsius. And uh, here we are at five. So the reading here should be 45. So we have 45. I have made it here really large for you to be able to see properly. Okay. So here this shows 45 on the thermometer. The second uh, thermometer is here. And you, you, can, if, if you can look here, this is zero mark. And between zero and 10, as I said before, there are 10 subdivisions, which means that one of the subdivisions is equivalent to one degree. So here we are one degree after 10, so it should be 11 degrees uh, Celsius. If you look here, the thermometer is calibrated to measure the temperature in degrees Celsius. That's why I'm saying one degree Celsius and not one degree something else, okay? Because there are other units of temperature here. This one is calibrated to measure the temperature in degrees Celsius. So here we have 11 degrees Celsius. If you do not see very well there, you can take a look here and see. This is a tenth mark and after 10, there's one uh, subdivision. Our main focus today is on lesson 24, which is using information on products. Okay, and we're going to progress with a plan for our lesson. We have objectives, prerequisites, real life situation, lesson activities, exercises. After the exercises, we have a summary of the lesson, and in the end, you are going to take home some assignments to test your understanding of the concepts we are learning in this session. So for our objective, by the time that we go to the end of this lesson, we are expected to be able to identify hazardous household products based on labeling. You are also expected to be able to read labels of household products, noting signal words, hazardous properties, and route of exposure. Okay? Now, for the prefaces, we have toxic uh, household products and uh, non-toxic household products. For the test of prefaces, name two non-toxic products used in bathrooms. Two non-toxic products used in bathrooms. Next, name two toxic products used in bathrooms. So firstly, you are naming two non-toxic products used in bathrooms. And secondly, you are naming two toxic products uh, used in bathrooms. So for the first, uh, toothpaste is non-toxic. Body lotion is non-toxic. They use them in the bathrooms. And then bleach 
is toxic and harmful to you if you ingest it. And toilet bowl cleaner is also toxic, it can be harmful to you, to your system if ingested. So here for relaxed ratio we have uh, smongwa, uh, playing with some things from the kitchen and when he picked up one of these things he noticed that it's written on it, danger. And the question is, what does the word danger signify? So by the time that we go to the end of this learning session, you must have acquired information in such a way that you'll be able to provide the response to this in an informed manner. Okay? So for the activities, the picture below shows the levels of some household products. Some of the products are hazardous and some non-hazardous. Here, there are one to six, eh? so it's a different products. You can take some time. Look here. Can you look? Product two, you can see it. Product three is here, product four, product five, product six. You can even pause the lesson or the video and examine the products well. Now the questions. What is a hazardous product? Secondly, how can you identify if a product is hazardous? And then, which of the products are actually hazardous? Apart from that, which of the products are non-hazardous? So for our response, uh, responses to it, what is a hazardous product? A hazardous product is one that has at least one of the following properties. It is toxic, it is flammable, it is corrosive or reactive. If a product meets any of this criteria, it is considered to be a hazardous product. What about it? We've said it is toxic, it is flammable, it is corrosive or reactive. There are some products that if they just a bit of it touch your eye, you will jump up and down until the product is washed off. So be careful not to let any kind of thing that you see around enter your eye, can even render you blind. Be careful, those who want to be adventurous around, be careful. So how can you identify if a product is hazardous? By looking for the words danger, the word poison, the word irritant, the word warning or caution on the product label. So there's the product label and there are some words that you can look for to know that the product is hazardous or not. Check if the word is using the danger, poison, irritant, warning, or caution. So here, which of the products are hazardous? We just said a while ago, we mentioned the things that you should observe in the products. To be able to say whether the products are hazardous or not hazardous. Among those uh, keywords, there was a word danger. You can see danger here. There is caution or attention. Okay. So we need to be careful. This one here is actually is clearly written on it, poison and also toxic. So in some of these cases, not just the word is speaking, but there is a symbol on it. That even if the word is not there, you see the symbol, take care and be careful. Okay. Now, even here, apart from the word caution and attention, look, can I look at this? That's a standard uh, symbol that represents that. Okay, the, it, there is equally the word irritant in product, on product 5. Almost all the products that you have around you in the house, they have these labels on them. Which products uh, of the products are not hazardous? So you can see product four and product two don't have those keywords. So it means that they are not hazardous. Okay, so for household uh, product labels, labels of household products provide users with the following information. Products is hazardous or non-hazardous. So if you have, have a product in your house, any product, there's information from it that can help you know whether the product is hazardous or not 
hazardous. So if the information is provided on the product, so there is, so, so there, there, there are labels on the household product, and they will show you whether the product is hazardous or not hazardous. That's one of the uh, information that the labels on the products that we have in our houses provide for us, whether it is hazardous or not hazardous. Next, it provides information for hazardous products. So if the product is hazardous, it actually provides information. The labels on the product provides the information. And which is the information? This is the signal word. And the signal word here can be the word danger. It can be the word warning. It can be the word caution. It can be the word poison. So the labels of the products that we, that, that, that we have in our houses, they provide us with this key information. So if you take any product, take, is it the food you, are, you plan to eat? Go through it. Whether it's a yogurt, you are whatever food, whether it's a drink, check. There is information on it. That might allow you to either continue to consume it or not to consume it. Then, the products or the labels that we have on the products we consume in our houses also provide information about the description of the hazard. So if there's a hazard uh, that the product can cause, the labels on the product will give you a description of what this hazard is all about. It will give you necessary precautions for safety. So this product you are seeing like this can cause this hazard, can cause that hazard, can cause this hazard. These are the steps that you are going to take to avoid these hazards. Apart from that, in case you miss any of the rules and run into trouble, it also provides some phase eight measures. For example, if you are suffering from the hazard of this product, like this in this particular way, do take these preliminary steps quickly for your safety before maybe contacting a, a qualified personnel like the hospital if your health is in danger. Okay, it also provides information about the quantity of the product. So check. You can buy a one liter product when inside is just 75 or 0 0.75 liters. Check to be sure that what you intend that the right information is given. So the labels, there are labels on the products that we have, we, we, we have in our houses, the ones that we purchase, even the ones that we might meet in the absence of somebody and that we need to use, there are labels on them. And the label provides a lot of information. We have listed a good number of them. Among the information, there's also the quantity of the product. Like, for example, the net mass of the product. That is here, like net width. Uh, we know that we are physicists and we're actually supposed to take note of net mass. Okay? What about the case? Information given by the label of the product that we intend to use. Next, the label of the product that we have in the house can also provide information about the actual volume of the product. So here you can see 475 ml, 475 milliliters. It also provides information about the storage temperature. Yes, it's true, you can have a product that you want to use. Of what use will it be if you notice that the product has been damaged? Like there are some drugs that when you, get, when, when you buy from the pharmacy, it is clarity on it, store at this temperature, store maybe in a, in a freezer. There are some that when you go to a hospital and they have to remove it and use on you, they make sure that when they finish using it, if there's any leftover, they send it to a fridge. Those conditions of storage, they are indicated on the labels that you have on the products in the house or at home. So try to follow the information concerning the labels on the products. Okay, it's, there is also the manufacturing and the expiry dates. 
If you look here, this particular uh, information on the canned drink, this most from canned drinks, like this one you are seeing here, indicates the manufacture. This MFG talks about manufacture date, and this uh, EXP here refers to the expiry date, okay? So I can read here like, uh, this manufactured on the 4th of uh, September 2014, can be a manufacturing date, and uh, the date of expiry, the 4th of September 2017. That's uh, a life, normal lifetime of 2015, 2016, 2017, about three years. So after that, if you don't consume or consult the labels on the product well, you go and see, see the product and you're not careful you buy an expired product that can cause harm to your system, having kill you. So be careful. So hazardous substances, what are they? A hazardous substance is one that may cause substantial personal injury or illness during handling or use. There are some products that will cause personal injury when you are using it. There are some products that will cause personal harm to you. It might not cause you fall sick when you are using it. I remember some few days ago, I dropped the product in the water and uh, as I was working with it, I noticed at some point I had to turn my face away because it was fuming. So a hazardous substance is one that may cause sub sub substantial personal injury or illness. There are some that once you ingest it, you feel really bad. Those substances are hazardous substances. Don't force yourself and say you are strong. Take care of yourself. Get me? Okay. Now, hazardous household products. Household products are hazardous if they contain substances that have one or more of the following hazardous properties. It may have just one of the properties. It may have more than one of the properties that we're going to mention here. And in any case, we shall classify such a product as a hazardous product or hazardous uh, household products or substance. So if the substance is corrosive, then it is a hazardous substance. So a product that can burn or destroy living tissue, such as skin or eyes, or by chemical action, is a corrosive product. It can do what? It can burn. It can destroy living tissue, like your skin. There are some products that really burns. There are some that they get into your eyes, you just you can even you can get blind. People have become blind because of things like that. So be careful, don't say you are a small hero. Examples. There are drain cleaners. There are some cleaners used for cleaning ovens, they can be very harsh. So they are corrosive. Example is lye. Those are different uh, kind of chemicals that can be corrosive. If the product is an irritant, we have mentioned that a household product can be classified as hazardous if it has any of the following properties that we have mentioned corrosive already. And the second property is if it's an irritant. Whether it's corrosive, an irritant, or other, uh, has other properties, it is a hazardous household product. So when we say a product is an irritant, a product is an irritant if it is not corrosive and causes injuries to the area of the body that it comes into contact with after immediate prolonged or repeated contact. 
There are some substances that we keep touching them. When you keep touching them, they will cause harm to your body. But they are not actually corrosive. But with repeated use, they so we describe them as irritant. So they can cause injury to the area of the body that comes into contact with it. Okay. So examples. Toilet cleaners are examples of irritants. Other examples include chlorine bleach cleaners and some pool chemicals, some chemicals that they pour like inside swimming pools. Which uh, other property can qualify a household product as a hazardous product? If it's a strong sensitizer, a product that can cause an allergic reaction upon repeated use of the substance. There are some products that when you use it, you are fine. But there are some people that cannot taste the same product. When they touch it, they might feel sick. But you might use it and not have a problem. But another person might use it and have an issue. That person is allergic to the product. So a house with such products are hazardous. Any of the three properties. If it has all of the properties, it is hazardous. If, if it has even just one of these properties, then it is also hazardous. Examples. Dyes. They use dyes to change the color of things like shoes. There's some things, substances that we can buy and uh, rub on a shoe and it changes color maybe from white to black. Other examples, they include uh, soaps. You might use a soap and feel okay, but yet notice that uh, a friend will use the same soap and uh, start having maybe some rashes on, him, on his or her body. Insecticides, paints, glues, polishes. The examples of uh, product consider as strong sensitizers and they qualify as hazardous household products. The next property that a substance might have to be considered as a hazardous product is that it is flammable. And any substance can be liquid or solid or the contents of a self-pressurized container like aerosols that can be easily set on fire or ignited, we call them inflammable products. Can easily catch a uh, fire. An example: they are paints, thinners, uh, adhesives, and uh, hairspray. We consider them as hazardous products. They qualify as flammable and hence hazardous products. Be careful the way you handle them for your safety. If the product is, is toxic, I would say a toxic product is one that can cause long-term effects like cancer, birth defects, or neurotoxicity that is toxic to nerves. There's a people who have nerve problems. Example like brake fluids, fungicides, insecticides, fertilizers, rat poison, and antifreeze. They are toxic substances. So, routes of exposure. So which are different ways that can expose yourself to these substances? Ingestion, like eating or drinking hazardous substances or contaminated foods and water and absorbing these substances through your gastrointestinal tract, like from your mouth, that through your mouth can go in. So that's ingestion. It's a way that can expose yourself to these substances. Then inhalation. So you can go in through your mouth. You can also go in through inhalation, like you breathe it in. Breathing in gases, vapors, and sprays that are absorbed through the lungs and enter the bloodstream. So these are ways that these substances can have access to a different route that can come into contact with your system. And that way is demar. Demar like through the skin or eye contact, anywhere there is a skin. Some hazardous products can be absorbed through the skin or your eyes and cause injuries. So once they touch your eye or your skin, you cannot touch them and remain the same. When they touch your body, they harm you. So be careful. 
So we talked about signal words in the beginning, and which are these signal words? We have words like poison. You can see poison on this container. And when we say it's uh, the signal word poison here, there's also the symbol. It means that it's highly toxic and can destroy uh, the system. So there is danger, extremely flammable, corrosive or highly toxic. There is warning, which means that it's moderately toxic. And there's caution, which means that it's slightly toxic. So you should use it with care if you have to use it. And the signal words are found in every hazardous products product label and show how toxic or hazardous a product can be. So if there is no signal word or product, it is not hazardous. So that's something you should know. So safety of use of safe use of hazardous household products. How can you be safe as you use those products that will consider them as hazardous? Always follow the label directions and use only the amounts indicated. If they say use one spoon, don't go and put two. Use products in well ventilated areas to avoid breathing fumes. So use them in areas that are open, they're exposed, so that if even they run, if they escape, they should have enough space to go to and not cause harm to your body. Keep containers tightly closed to prevent evaporation. There are some that once they are containers are open, they start going out. So you should keep uh, the containers tightly closed to prevent that. For exercises, the picture below shows the label of a household product. You can see. How do you know if the product is hazardous? What are the properties of that make the product hazardous? Give an example of such a product. What safety precautions should be taken when handling this product? So for a specific solution, here the product is hazardous because of the signal word danger is found on its label. You can see it. Uh, what are the properties that make the properties hazardous? Extremely flammable. That's one of the properties. And they give an example of such a product, uh, paint is one of them. And uh, what safety precautions should be taken when handling this product? The product should be used in a well ventilated area. We just discussed that a while ago. So now about the issue about little Ngwa who was lifting some substance in the kitchen and came across one on which is written danger. What does the word danger signify? So the danger, the word danger on the product signifies that the product is hazardous and the extremely flammable, corrosive or highly toxic. Okay. So in summary, we're saying that the hazardous substance is one that may cause substantial personal injury or illness during handling or use. We're saying that products are hazardous if they contain substances that have one or more of the following hazardous properties. Like it's corrosive, it's an irritant, can have can be a strong sensitizer, it can be flammable or toxic. And here's an assignment for you to take home. What makes a product hazardous? Okay. So we that we actually come to the end of our learning session for today, in which we drew references from uh, explaining physics, the GCS E edition by Stephen Popper. We also consulted Mastering Physics by Jagadeza and Govenda and Sion Robertson. And we also made use of Oregon State. Uh, edu. Our next lesson shall be an activity of integration. <laughs> Manetambia niña ne injubia yen.